what's probably a really overdue video for this channel, but something that a lot of athletes talk about and coaches talk about on the daily is the topic of lactate threshold, anaerobic threshold. What does it all mean? What is this FTP value we're talking about? We're gonna break it down really simple today. Have a look at some physiological data in terms of blood lactate from the lab, help you understand exactly what we mean when we talk about threshold. Hey guys, Nick here. Welcome back to the channel, talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Welcome if you're watching for the first time, please consider subscribing down below to join the community. We've got a great thing going on with plenty of interaction happening in the comments and really great questions coming through that stemming into some of the videos as well. So make sure if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and join in on, on all the fun that's going on. Like I said in the intro, this is kind of an overdue video that I haven't gone into lactate threshold after the first 50 or so videos on the channel, but I thought it was a perfect time to jump into it because it is a topic that I think we quite often take for granted in terms of threshold and understanding threshold, but it's something that when we get it right, it can be really meaningful and useful uh, in terms of applying into training. And I, I, what I mean by that is, is by understanding the principles and the physiology of threshold, you can then better understand how to apply it in a training sense and what is happening from a training perspective. When we go and do threshold type sessions, when we do sessions like 1K repeats on the track, if you're a runner. So basically as a really simple starting point, there's a lot of different names you can use for this threshold component. You hear lactate threshold, you hear anaerobic threshold, you hear FTP, so functional threshold, um, pace or functional threshold power, depending if you bike or run. Um, there's a number of different ways we can, we can look at it. There's some older methods called on of blood lactate accumulation, maximal lactate steady state. There's all of these different things, but I'm gonna keep it really simple and talk about the most common way of looking at lactate threshold, which is what everyone defines as the theoretical intensity that you can sustain for 45 to 60 minutes. Now, when we are looking at that, it's the perfect metric for someone who's going and racing a sprint distance triathlon or racing a 10,000 meter event, 5,000 it's useful. But really, I've done videos before and I might actually link it above uh, and down in the description below so you can go check it out about the importance of VO2 max in certain circumstances. But when we're talking about these events that are lasting 45 to an hour, slightly less, maybe just above up to sort of 90 minutes, maybe like your half marathon, for example, something like lactate threshold is actually a really cr critical determinant of performance, more so than something like VO2 max. And as we get to the longer events again, things like running economy or economy come into it a little bit more, but threshold is a, actually a, basically a number one indicator of endurance performance across the board compared to VO2 max when we are talking about more sustained performance. And even more specifically, it's velocity or power output at lactate threshold that is the kicker in terms of who succeeds or who is gonna be the most successful athlete. And this makes sense. If we look at, uh, I'll pull out the, the half marathon, for example, the athlete is gonna win the half marathon typically has the highest threshold in terms of percentage of VO2 max. They might be able to hold 90, 95% of their VO2 max, but there's context behind it as well. Instead of just holding 16 kilometers an hour, so 345 pace is their threshold out of a possible VO2 max of say 335, they're holding three minute K pace out of a possible 255 VO2 max. So it's the velocity or the power at lactate threshold, not necessarily where it fits within your own physiology, but the velocity at that point. So how fast are you actually going that is gonna be the determinant of performance and really across the board is our number one because for all endurance athletes, unless you're racing a 1500 meter race and 800, maybe a 3000 meter on the track, um, short races on the track in terms of cycling, mainly threshold is gonna be a better indicator rather than VO2 max because the efforts are longer than that five to six minute period. You go less than that, VO2 max is probably our better indicator there. We talked about the 45 to 60 minute uh, period as being that estimated time we can sustain this intensity for and that, that maximum time we can sustain this intensity for. And it really comes down to um, the, the last point at which our blood lactate accumulation is being equaled uh, by its removal. So when we have blood lactate accumulating in our system as a result of anaerobic processes having to kick in, I mentioned before in previous videos about the aerobic system, it can function pretty well, but once it gets put under the pressure and we start increasing intensity, it starts to not be able to use as much oxygen as effectively because we need energy fast. And the aerobic system isn't really our fast system. The anaerobic systems are. Think back to the energy systems video I did a few, uh, about a week or so ago, talking about anaerobic contribution gives us this fast rapid energy. The aerobic system doesn't quite catch up uh, or uh, allow that as effectively. So we need to get this supplementary energy from somewhere else, that being the anaerobic systems, to help us increase the intensity further. And as intensity goes up and up and up, that's why the faster and faster and faster you get, even if you go out and just jump on the bike or you go out running and you progressively over time just try to get faster and faster, eventually it gets harder and harder and harder. You start feeling the burn in the legs because the aerobic system can't provide the energy quick enough. 
Um, same thing where if you start a hard interval, you go out really, really quick, the anaerobic systems kick in. So eventually we're gonna get this increase uh, of blood lactate accumulation. I might put up on the screen here a typical blood lactate graph where we look at intensity. And I've got this in kilometers now for speed in terms of running, but we could look at this as power. You can see the, the uh, the graph at the top, or the table at the top showing blood lactate. I've just got some arbitrary heart rate numbers in there and make a bit more sense later on when we're looking at comparing. But in terms of what we're looking at from a, a graph perspective, this is very, very typical of what we would see for predominantly most athletes. We see a reasonably flat trend early on. In this case, I've got some data here where we're talking about uh, two millimoles, 2.4, 2.5 being sort of the, the standard for this athlete. Some athletes will have it down in the ones. Anywhere between one and two millimoles is pretty typical resting. In this case, the athlete's on the slightly upper end. But then what we see about that 3.7 millimoles at 14 kilometers an hour, and I'm gonna circle it and have it circled up here so you can see, is this turning point. All of a sudden, we've gone from not much accumulation, quite similar in terms of what our blood lactate reading's doing as intensity's been going up from 11 to 12 to 13, 14, etc., including our zero, so our resting measure. And you can see a little bit of residual fatigue probably when we started this test. But as we get to that 14 kilometers an hour mark, we hit 3.7 and then Interestingly enough, there's what we call an exponential increase. We go from 3.7 to 7.4. That's our first big jump, if you like, or rapid accumulation of blood lactate. That point there, that last point where blood lactate entry is being equaled by its removal. So the body's able to produce a bit of lactic acid, get rid of it pretty much at the same rate and balance it out. Yes, it is accumulating a little bit. We go from 2.4, 2.8, 3.7, but small accumulations, body can handle that. We now have a big accumulation and that's really that last point there, that turning point is our threshold. So that is our theoretical 45 to an hour. Once we get past that, you can see blood lactate rises really, really fast. 7.4 and then 12.5 starts to go up. Eventually the athlete's gonna fatigue and, and not be able to tolerate and buffer those, those, uh, those hydrodynes that are coming in. The lactic acid basically accumulates to a point where it's too much. We start to fatigue, we slow down, we need to recover and the body basically just stops shuts down and says no. So really what we're looking at here is we've got a very clear metric of, well, if we train at and just below that lactate threshold, we're gonna be reasonably comfortable. It's gonna be more more so for the longer longer type efforts. Get us better at tolerating a little bit when it comes in, but we're more focused on trying to produce a bit more of an aerobic adaptation. We go further down, less than about two and a half millimoles, ideally for most people. Again, most people is where we're gonna be doing our long, slow base case, if you like the zone two stuff, just building some volume into the legs gives us some pretty good scope to be a lot more precise on what our uh, per, uh, ent intensity prescription is, if you want to spit it out, based on some, some clear metrics in terms of what's happening. We push up above that threshold, we go just above it, it gives us a really good stimulus to then be able to tolerate and buffer those hydrodynes a little bit better. That's where we're gonna really get some effectiveness out of things like 1K repeats, 800 meter repeats on the track with short recovery. That's where we're gonna get some really good effectiveness and try to boost that FTP up just a little bit, that threshold up a little bit. What are we aiming to achieve out of some of that training is probably the last thing I'm gonna leave you with here is I've got some data here and, and similar, you can see the blue line, I'll put it up on the screen. I've got a comparison graph of an athlete and I've actually taken that, that data I've got before of, of a pre-test and a post-test. And what's happened between, uh, I guess, between tests here is we've got the blue line, you can see where threshold is, it's that same point. But this orange line now actually extends out a little bit more. You can see threshold's probably close to about 4.9 millimoles rather than that 3.7. Threshold can happen around four millimoles for some athletes. It can be less as we've seen in the first test here. It can be more in the second test. What have we done? We've done a lot of training to be able to induce this adaptation and basically push this graph to the right. And that's why that orange graph is slightly shifted across. Threshold is a little bit higher because we've worked at and just above threshold in specifically for this athlete to be able to improve their ability to tolerate that fatigue when it comes in, tolerate those hydrodynes when they produce, being able to push a little bit harder for a little bit longer We've seen an increase about uh, from a from a wattage perspective. Here we've seen an increase in um, 30 watts in terms of FTP over a short period of time, three four months of training, just by targeting that specific quality. So that's really what we're trying to do from an FTP or threshold training perspective: is boost up where that turning point is. Where do we start to see that rapid accumulation? accumulation in lactic acid. Typically for us, when we define rapid, we're looking for a two millimole or more jump. Most of the blood lactate readers, the handheld ones that, that most are gonna be using in a lab setting or in the field setting, have an error of about one millimole. So I like to say two millimoles or more to really confirm we've got a clear change that is outside the error of the unit or, or the, the device. But from, from this perspective, we've seen here, what have we seen some adaptations is lactic acid was at about three, or lactate millimoles was at 3.7 millimoles at threshold prior. We've gone away, done some training. We're actually better at buffering and tolerating that lactic acid. Now we're getting at 4.9 before we see that clear two millimole or more jump. So we're actually able to manage a little bit more. We're able to work at a slightly higher intensity as well. 
what does that allow us to do? That also allows us to work a little bit harder for longer. So potentially VO2 max is gonna be able to be at a slightly faster pace or speed or wattage, whatever it may be as well. And you can see that here is actually the, the highlight numbers are 12.7. That same really high lactate reading is actually happening th uh, 60 watts higher again. So from a top end perspective, the athlete's got a much bigger engine. We're able to do a lot more with it. We're also able to probably push this out even further. So there's a couple of, uh, I guess, insights into the physiology and some of the data, some actual monitoring of blood lactate, this threshold metric. In summary, it's this theoretical intensity we can sustain for 45 to an hour for holding it bang on. It, it is that that intensity there. It happens for most people around that four millimoles, but it's not specifically four millimoles for everyone. Could be a little bit lower in the sort of threes like we see. Could be a little bit higher, up to four or five. I've even seen as high as sort of six, six and a half, depending on the type of athlete you are. The aim of doing threshold training is to move that graph to the right though. We wanna increase the amount of uh, lactate we can tolerate uh, or, or buffer in our system, lactic acid we can buffer in our system, but also increase the velocity at threshold because that's really our key performance indicator when it comes to endurance performance over extended periods. Velocity or power at lactate threshold, the, whoever's got the highest one of those, is gonna be probably winning that event majority of the time. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Let me know down in the comments below if you've got any questions around lactate threshold and some of the physiology and the data, the monitoring that we're going through here. As always, please leave those questions down there because they're really useful and make sure you are subscribed to the channel to keep up to date with all of the latest content coming out soon. That is it for today and we'll see you in the next one.